Helen, can you remember why, how we met, why we met? We met as a result initially of having met someone before you, which was My Climate and Me, uh, a, a programme oh, yes. that the Met Office were backing yes. and developing. And they came to see us at the London College of Fashion um, when they were sort of going industry by industry to see how climate change might impact on different industries and different cultures. I, I can't remember what you gave us a brief, but it was very... Yes. It, was a, it, was a, it was a difficult yeah. brief. I well, said, could, you, was, could you do the future in 10 minutes, please? That was it. It was just, yes. just a prediction of the future, but yeah. not necessarily about climate change. Just, no, just it was from your perspective. From our how, perspective, How do you yes. see us as a species? Um, how do you see us as people who are going to be hopefully living here for a while and still producing things um, and making connections with other people? You know, how might that change in the future? Yeah, I, I love those kinds of conversations. So we, we picked on things, I think I'd, I'd read some Steven Pinker and he was talking about human universals and this notion yes. that, um, you know, it's like me saying I know nothing about fashion, but I, I have some sense of what I should put on in the morning. If I wasn't coming from the perspective of how can we sell more stuff, but the, the fact that to some degree or other, most people check what they're gonna wear in the morning. Yeah. <laughs> Um, so it's uh, again a kind of idea of using the surface of us in a, in a different way. And we had this this fusion of climate change and fashion. Let's just yes. let's just collide. Yeah. Well, the collide term is a term that I've heard you use since, yes. but we didn't. I don't think we really thought about it at that time. They were just things that I knew about, things that you knew about, yes. and things that we thought would be an interesting experience for the public and also for yes. the. Well, artists really, we brought designers and students, some yeah. of my colleagues, some of yours, and we spent a weekend together. And that's where the, the, sort of the idea of the dress emerged, isn't it, yes. really? My experience is that no one's afraid of a frock. Right. And that you have to use the power of that, okay. which is, if they think they're looking at fashion, if they think they're looking at art, um, then they are open. Okay. And so if you can then, through uh, Trojan horse-ness, or subterfuge or whatever ever way you want to do it at the same time deliver something that's more difficult than looking at a frock you've got them in the right space which is to be open and to be curious and in some ways to be disarmed by beauty so it's it if i do my job right it's it's using beauty to disarm people into being able to engage with something that might be more difficult than the thing they're looking at I see. So you're not throwing a slogan at them, you're no. inviting them to, to look yeah, at it. Yeah, and piece. I think there's multiple levels of that. So what, what I've learned over the last sort of 20 years of doing this is you can speak to an 8-year-old and an 80-year-old through this medium. And again, it goes back to some of the things we said before, sure. which is, to some degree, everybody knows what, about what they're wearing. Everyone has an attachment to what they're wearing. Why is it going to be displayed in a train station? It's being displayed in St Pancras, partly because um, St Pancras is one of those sta stations with the biggest dwell time. So although everybody is on the move and they're either coming back from somewhere or going to somewhere, uh, it's a space that has a kind of cathedral quality about it where people actually like to be. Um, circumstantially also, but, but crucially, the climate summit on it in Paris at the other end of Eurostar, and we're literally a few feet away from Eurostar, is where all the people that are going to be either listening to the decisions that are being made or contributing to the decisions that are going to be made are going to be passing through. So there's a, there's a complete timeliness about being in that station. If those people were to ask you, what is this? You know, is, is it a work of art? When I'm there, I won't be there sort of 24 hours a day the whole time, but I'd, I'd like to ask them that question myself. You know, what is it? What is it you think you are looking at? What do you think it's saying to you? What's it not saying to you? How will you describe it to other people? Um, it's a, a, the, the, the whole piece is there for questions. Um, and they're questions that I'm asking through the piece, but they're also questions that I think the public will have of the piece. I think as soon as you tell someone what it is, you cut them off from their own curiosity because they think they've been given the answer. And I'm really interested in that space where people fathom and make sense of something for themselves. And in some senses, that's what's made the communications around the project difficult. Because if you say this is a something, there is nothing for anyone else to contribute to. You have to leave this tiny gap where somebody is given space to make sense of something for themselves. Given some cues and given some context, but it's only valuable if it's valuable to the person that's looking at it. And so uh, I've got to step forward, but also step backwards. What particularly fascinates me with, me with this is the sense to which fashion is really 
from my perspective anyway, is, is quite neutral on this. You know, that, that, that um, you know, if you're a car enthusiast or you know, your lifestyle is such or, or, you, or you, you feel threatened in some way by proposals that are being made around um, mitigating climate change, that fashion is not one of those interests where people feel automatically that they have to take a particular side. So it, mm. it's great that it's, it's open and it's neutral and it separates us from those quite difficult political considerations around people's expectations of how um, scientists talk about climate change, yeah. how the general public then come to understand it, that we can present material in this way. I think at its further search though what I'm really interested in, in finding out is whether by taking this different approach to a subject like climate change whether people can find their place in it for themselves. So whether they can kind of live their own questions rather than feeling like they have to know an enormous amount in order to have an opinion or feel not overwhelmed in order to have an opinion. So it's trying to keep people in connection and in relationship to the subject matter in perhaps an unusual way. And I suppose for me what, what I want out of it, there's, there's um, sort of two levels but they inform each other um, and one is the degree to which the public um, warm to this way of being able to talk about difficult stuff and on the other for academia to come out of its narrowness around or specificness if you like uh, and expertise around something and allow what the public feel and don't feel about these things to influence the nature of what we look at and why we, why we study it. Um, and, and so as ever it's a sort of uh, occupying in between worlds uh, across disciplines, across yeah, public, forming, across private. Um, forming bridges forming between bridges, these yeah. different areas. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and inviting them to cross those bridges. Yeah, and also yeah. invite them to say, you know, is this are we doing this in a way that allows you entry into this? Um, can we get you to be less defensive sometimes? Mm. Um, is this the best way to talk about this? Yes. Um, because if we don't, then we are all in trouble. <laughs> yeah. Well, I'm, I'm, I, it certainly it's made me feel much more optimistic. And, and, and I think, you know, if you look around the conversations that others are having, there's, there's actually some real... There's some real yeah optimism about the future yes. you know the the, the, he the wonderful health story that we heard that yeah. actually if you did all of these things that are being proposed around more people cycling and and reducing our use of the car and, and and so on they were saying that the end result of that is that people will be healthier they'll live longer and they'll be wealthier mm. it's like yeah that's great yeah let's do it yeah how can others help with this where, where do you see this going next what what, what would you like to see happen in future? I, I think part of being at St Pancras w with that huge diversity of people around is um, to, to, to learn more about the language that we need to be able to talk about these sorts of things and I think that will come out of sort of dropping this piece in a very unexpected way in St Pancras. They've, they've never had anything like this either over this time scale or at this time or in that space before um, and the fact that it's a piece of fashion I think is going to allow people to be able to mm -hmm access all these things that we've been speaking of. What I have learned about the work, these sorts of works, which are kind of hybrid and experiment with new things, that, is that once they exist, people say, oh, now I get it, can I have it? And so it, it's quite an act of courage or bravery for St Pancras to take it in its first iteration, because within that there is experiment and there is the unknown. But then these are some of the things we have to get used to. Well, let's, yeah, I'm looking forward to seeing it. Yeah. <laughs>